Good morning, folks. Well, Diego here from beautiful. Look at that. Ain't that beautiful? Oh, my God. Now, that's beautiful. That's my country, my kind of country, where the uh, surf meets the turf, where the uh, garden veggies meet the fish and the mariscos. Mariscos are anything seafood. Okay? And I'm over here at the old mill, my favorite place. Just beautiful over here, and there's nobody here but the security guard. So it's uh, Tuesday, the 18th of April, 2023. God willing, it's going to be a good day. I'm going to make some good contacts and get busy making money. All right. So I've been here for uh, two nights and three days. <laughs> uh, it probably cost me like $500 to come down here and poke around. Okay, the, the gas and the couple hotel nights, that they, they were reasonable, $30 a night. The food, you know, I think 10 bucks a meal, something like that. Very good food at the, at the uh, old meal here. And then this morning's breakfast at the old uh, San Quentin restaurant downtown. But like I said, uh, it's the only sit-down restaurant besides this place for the tourists. There's no sit-down, dine-in. I mean, it's really, really scarce. I found one coffee shop that was modern, like a Starbucks, but it, it was a different name. It was very modern. Internet, espressos, everything. And then uh, this morning's uh, breakfast was like a traditional Mexican breakfast with um, a whole, uh, four or five waitresses running around, pouring you coffee, good food, and for very reasonable. Lots of food for 10 bucks. okay? I've got my leftovers sitting right here. <laughs> okay, so obviously uh, at Tuesday morning in the middle of April is not a busy day for tourists or fishermen or anybody. You know, it's still kind of windy, and it's not really cold compared to, you know, South Dakota standards. This ain't cold. I got my jacket on today, but uh, this ain't cold. It's it's a little blustery, you know, breezy. And then in the afternoons down here, the sun has been burning off the fog, and it's been actual, actually hot. So that's it's only April, and it's getting hot, so no wonder the crops grow so good down here. And they start the planting season early with the, all the greenhouses that they have. And then it just takes off with the summer heat. It's probably pretty, uh, pretty darn hot, maybe even unbearable. We'll find out. So, so far this morning, I've um, just eaten breakfast. I took a drive up north to check out the, um, all the workers are going to the uh, produce plants, you know, the packing plants, basically, either the fields or the packing plants or driving the trucks. The whole area depends on the agriculture. So then uh, I stopped by Poncho's uh, boat shop, boat yard on the way over here, which is just like three miles up the road towards the main highway. Nobody's there yet. And uh, here's the first guy that showed up so far. Uh, Husband and wife driving around with their little dog taking a look at uh, the conditions this morning. They got all the uh, the score, the Baja 500 stickers, the Baja Bugs. Score is a big racing uh, organization that races Baja. Okay, here's the, the joggers come out here for a nice jog. I would too. And, um, okay, so I checked over there right behind me at uh, Tiburon Pongas. And Tiburon, his real name is Alberto. He's not up yet. His his wife, his wife even called him Tiburon. <laughs> oh, Tiburon's in the house or something. So that's funny. 
and I stopped by uh, Eddie's landing next door and uh, Eddie's not around. He, he's the uh, retired law enforcement officer. He said he's had to drive up to San Diego today anyway. So that's all I'm doing folks is just making my contacts, my connections, getting the word out that there's a uh, handicapped guy with a red hat in a big ram truck driving around asking about boats and fishing and fresh fruits and veggies all right folks and that would be me so hopefully i'll get something going today it's taken me a couple days to get my wits about me i'm not a young man anymore where i figure things out fast you know the first day i was like in a daze driving around here i i couldn't even talk to people you know i didn't but you know, now I'm starting to feel more comfortable, okay, and more confident, and with God's help, we can accomplish anything. I hope and pray that uh, our families are okay, the, the little woman and her family, and my family, my mom, my brother, everything uh, so far so good, mom and Ray. You know, they they did the best show they could do, and hopefully they're moving on. Uh, Ray's all excited about it. So is Mom. Okay, folks, uh, one way or the other, uh, probably not spending another night in San Quentin. I've got too much of stuff here uh, in the truck to be useful. I've got to store it somewhere. So if I head back to Tijuana and the little woman is uh, busy with her family and it's only a one bedroom apartment. So her family comes first, her daughter and granddaughter can sleep in the bed with her. And I'm the man. My job is to be out in the world fighting dinosaurs. Okay. And so uh, if it's busy there, I'll head over to Vegas and, at least uh, check on my mom, help my brother out, and store some of this stuff. We got computer here and tools and my 12 volt batteries, my 12 volt systems, all that. So, getting stuff going, folks. Being a man, <laughs> age 66, and uh, pretty handicapped, but you know, there's no way I'm going to retire in a retirement home or anything close to retirement village or anything like that. No, I'm going to go down with the ship fishing. Okay, folks. Well, Diego, over and out for now. Okay, folks, I did get out of the truck, and it is uh, blistery over here at the old mill since 1887. Okay, look at how beautiful this is. The garden, the statues, the palm trees, the ocean, or should I say a bay of the ocean. Okay, this is a very unique place because uh, they say it, this bay winds on for 10 miles, okay? And um, uh, you can see in the old days they they built a dam across uh, across there, over there. Uh, the tide coming in, the tide going out. And they, they funneled most of the water's energy through that channel, which obviously turned the old uh, mill, the old uh, water wheel, into power. And they were able to uh, grind uh, grain, I guess, uh, I don't know if it was mostly for flour, for tortillas, or corn for tortillas. I'd have to read up on the history. But uh, obviously they don't need the water power anymore, but it was a good idea in the time. So over 130, 40 years ago. Okay, so the truck's parked there around the corner. I came over here. This is the restaurant where I was eating yesterday afternoon, so I'm a client. Besides, I've stayed here before. I was eating right here at this first table, and the internet signal is real strong here, folks. <laughs> uh, so I'm connected, and I'm able to 
upload my videos. That's the main reason for, for being here. See all the stickers on the window from the um, Baja events, the Baja buggy, Baja racing, you know, a lot of them. There's big money in, in the Baja races. There's the 250, the 500, and the 1,000. I guess they don't go down to Cabo anymore. It's I, I heard it's too hard to race all the way to Cabo San Lucas, a thousand miles. But they go around in the desert and um, La Paz and over to San Felipe. They have their routes where they're trying not to cause too much environmental damage and also uh, private property damages. So, score is the big one. Score is the big organization that races. These are all the, like, individual little uh, racing companies. Let's see, there's big money in that. All the tires, the shocks, the, the motors, the systems, the, everything. Big money in winning those races. Big sponsors nowadays. Even um, ESPN has flies helicopters to get all the action. It, when it's going, it's big sports, ESPN. Okay, I just love it over here, though. Look at this. Garden Paradise. It's uh, Fisherman's Paradise. Okay, and I want to be a part of it. So let's go get, get going on uh, some boats, all right? Talk to you later. Okay, folks, I just had to show you how beautiful it is over here on the east side of the old mill. Look at these um, bell-shaped flowers. I'm not sure what they're called. <laughs> it's very beautiful. There's absolutely no fishermen here today. No divers, no kayakers. Nothing. I have been enjoying the um, the birds, especially the turtle doves. Okay, the ring neck neck uh, doves. From what I understand, the doves they mate for life, and so they're in pairs with their pareja. They're they're paired for life, from what I understand. But the uh, the pigeons, I tell you, the pigeons are, are something else. The males won't leave the females alone, constantly dancing and courting them. Nature's way. So, okay. It's just me and the security guard. Nobody else is spawning. So, we'll, uh, we'll head back towards town and we'll be talking to... Um, Pancho and his son Pancho. Okay, everybody likes my South Dakota plates. Okay, and everybody thinks this truck is really big and fancy with a big more motor, but really those scoops are on backwards, and all the uh, previous owners, uh, Adorno, they call it. Uh, just for looks stuff like those exhaust pipes aren't even hooked up they're not even real <laughs> okay it's a ram 1500 but i do think it, i think it does have like a supercharger in it though ram charger okay here's a close-up at the flowers here this side of the old mill is just as beautiful as the front it's a museum too museo is a it's like a living museum. So, well, you can't ask, ask for better uh, scenery and better nature. Okay, folks? Now you see why I love it over here. All right. Time to go to work. <laughs> okay, folks. Just met Moses over here halfway between the highway and the old uh, mill. He's selling kosas over here. Your kosas. Okay. If 
Picasso. All right. Okay, folks, I'm going down down the street now to uh, meet Pancho. All right, talk to you later. Okay, folks, it's still Tuesday morning, 10 o'clock or so. Uh, making my way from the old mill down there to Pancho's boatyard, another half mile down the road, and had to stop off and talk to these people about fresh strawberries jerry's produce okay here's his policies all right his policies probably for the workers or whatever you know uh workers rights workers security safety okay it's, uh, everything is above board down here in mexico uh, i've noticed uh, outdoor bathrooms for the workers in the fields and probably get their, here's their stuff uh, obligatory to comply. See, the, we, okay, wash your hands in the area of trabajo. So when you're handling the produce, the food, okay. Uh, I'm sure it's uh, stuff like, uh, no drinking they don't want you bringing foreign foods into the fields uh, no flip-flops no pregnant women no alcoholic beverages uh, no tequila <laughs> and uh, they don't want you eating on the strawberries you know and packing them in the crates and all that they're very uh, very strict okay see they're uh, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of uh, rules that they've learned the hard way from people. Uh, lawsuits and stuff like that. So what we're going to do, folks, is we're just going to ask uh, how much is a box of uh, strawberries fresh out of the fields, okay? Okay, folks, you're not going to believe it, but I just bought a case of strawberries right out of the field for 300 pesos. That's only $15, folks. These fine gentlemen... Uh, See, look, they're picking strawberries, the mas fresh, mas fresco in the mundo, aquí in San Quentin. And I just bought this, okay? Fresco healthy and fresh and healthy. Doesn't get any better than this, folks. Okay, I'm going to go get my truck over there and just come over here. I've already paid the man, and I appreciate it. Mucho gracias. All right? Thank you. Okay, there they go with the fresh load of strawberries. Ustedes vende for in the uh, fabrica? Hay una fabrica compra? Como te llamas la fabrica? Oh, no sé. Uh, Drisco, Drisco's? No. That's one of the big one. Drisco's is big, muy grande. Wow. Okay, folks. I just. Uh, Made my first strawberry deal. Muy fresh. Has follow all the rules of Jerry's produce. And this gentleman is Caballero. Gracias for ayudarme. Thank you for helping me. My truck. My truck. <laughs> wow, folks. I just can't believe it that I just bought a case of strawberries for $15. 300 pesos that's about 15 dollars i i gave the guys the workers 500 pesos which is like 25 dollars because i want to make connections here okay look at this this is on the road going to the old mill jerry's produce okay and uh no fresh fruit deal would be complete without the taste test there's no need no need to uh, wash them off you know hell with it if there's a little dirt on here i don't care okay folks well diego first purchase of some fresh fruit right out of the field mm. Mm. Wow, okay, juicy, okay, Rico. Mm. 
Wow. I've never had a strawberry like that. <laughs> never in my life have I had a huge fresh strawberry right out of the field. Mm. And they can have the stem. <laughs> The old meal is right over there by that rounded mountain with the antennas on top. Okay. Be careful, they travel pretty fast down this highway. Wow. Okay. I will put this back. Wow, wow, wow. I'm so impressed. <laughs> so impressed. <laughs> Now, to tell you the truth, I haven't seen any other produce growing in the fields other than uh, cactus nepalis over there. It looked like they were harvesting those also. Now, I've seen trucks on the side of the road selling corn, maize, and uh, watermelons, sandia, and oranges, naranjas. Okay, none of those have I seen growing over here? Okay, so they're importing those from somewhere. I'd like to know where. Fresh corn, sweet corn, the big watermelons, and the oranges. <laughs> I know the oranges grow good in Southern California, so, but I haven't seen an orange grove over here. Just grapes. Um, I've seen green stuff growing in the fields that looks like, you know, it could be onions, could be lettuce, uh, cabbage, but see folks, I, I don't know for sure what, what they're growing over here and what's fresh, but for sure we know we got fresh strawberries, very fresh, okay? That's a product of Mexico, a product of Baja, Mexico, okay? This is, very fresh produce. Okay, there's so-and-so Lopez at Gmail. Okay? All right. God is good. God is great. Thank you for this food. Amen. Okay, folks. Just want to get you a view of the uh, field. I just purchased uh, a case of strawberries on it. Okay. Right here. It's a Jerry's produce. Jerry's berries. Right over there. That last truck is where I bought it. Right there, those guys right there. Okay. That's the field where I bought my first star. Okay, folks. Wow. I'm so happy now. Two, three, four good connections of different stuff here in uh, San Quentin. Thank you. Okay, folks. Old well, Diego here getting stuff going this morning, Tuesday morning. I'm here in Pancho's boatyard. Okay, all his pongas and cabin boats, skipjacks, a lot of different stuff, motors, trailers, okay? These guys know how to do it all. And right now they're fixing my, mounting my extra tire under my truck. And, uh, okay. Getting things done. So, they're over there working under the truck, and I'm uh, organizing my my interior and getting uh, ready for a load. Okay. So. Okay, folks. Well, Diego here. Es más fácil que te comuniques con él. Más joven. Ya, yo sé. Yeah. My, my hijos también. Sí. Yo tengo muchos hijos, nietos. Everybody sabes the computer, solo yo. Okay, folks. We're over here at Pancho's Boatyard getting uh, things done, getting ready for the summer fishing season. And everybody is listo. Here in San Quentin. We're all ready to go fishing. We just need boats that work good. All right. Okay. Okay, folks, it's uh, exactly noon in San Quentin. I'm heading out to Ensenada pretty soon. Got my first assignment. 
All right, had a good two-hour visit with Pancho and Pancho Jr., and we um, talked a lot of smack, but in the end, um, I know what they're looking for, boat motors, and I know what I need to do. I need to go to Ensenada. I got to find this guy, Marco uh, or Ornelius. He's got outboard motors, 100 and... They got to be over 100 horsepower, okay? It's got one of, I think, 130 horsepower. Uh, anywhere up to 220, okay? To motor these pongas uh, through the waves and stuff in the ocean, okay? So that's what they're looking for, good outboards. They prefer Yamaha and then Honda and then Johnson's to Hatsu's. Everything else is second to those two, especially Yamahas, okay? Everybody worldwide wants a Yamaha, 100, and 100 plus, up to 200 and something, okay? Perfect engine for uh, these uh, pongas that go out in the ocean. So I'm headed to Ensenada here shortly, getting one last uh, coffee here at my favorite coffee store in uh, San Quentin. Okay, and uh, using the internet here, and then I'll be taking off down to Ensenada. First assignment. Okay, folks, it's been a good one. God is very good. I feel blessed to have, uh, in three days, have learned what I did about San Quentin. <laughs> Got my first crate of strawberries and my first uh, assignment for the fishing boats. All right. Well, Diego, over and out for now. God bless. Okay, folks, Well, Diego here. It's 9 o'clock at night. It's still Tuesday the 18th. What a day. God is really great. I did all that stuff this morning from early in the morning till noon. Put that on one video, and then the afternoon was even better. Um, I could have left it at 27 minutes, but I just got to finish the story because it's one heck of a, a day, probably one of my best days in my life because uh, I left off with uh, pa Pancho and Pancho Jr. at, at their boatyard in uh, San Quentin. And the last thing they said to me is look for outboard motors, big ones, okay? Yamahas and Hondas Primero, okay? So I, I gassed up and took off down the mountain. I call it down the mountain from San Quentin because it sure feels like you, um, you're coming down, downhill to Ensenada. But I know you, there, you got to go uphill to come downhill. Very uh, good uh, drive. Uh, pretty dangerous. You got big trucks and cars coming at you. It's only a two-lane highway each way. A lot of potholes and curvy roads through the mountain. Uh, I stopped off um, <clears throat> at kind of like Camelou, uh, uh, Punta um, Col Colonel. I still can't say that, Colonel. And um, I, I hit a Dulceria, a, candy, a big candy shop, got my... Uh, kind of like Twix bars. They weren't Twix, but the Mexican version of it. And that and my fresh strawberries kept me going the whole way. It's about 200 miles from all the way from San Quentin back here to our apartment in Tijuana. And the little lady was pr pretty upset because she couldn't get a hold of me all day. But there's no inter internet on the road, so... You know, nothing was working, but I was working, and my truck was working. <laughs> so uh, I knew the military checkpoint was going to be coming into Ensenada, and so uh, I was ready. Had my just my one box of fresh strawberries right there where the soldiers could see them, nothing hiding. But luckily, they just waved me through. They're mostly there for uh, commercial reasons, okay? If you you got to pay all your fees and have your permits and all that to transport a lot of stuff through there commercially. 
So I was fine. Um, hit a lot of traffic coming into Ensenada. But uh, it took me about three hours in all to get to get to Ensenada. And then I went to my old outboard motor mechanic, Jaime, that I've used a long time ago for my little outboards. You know, and he, he did a good job. Uh, the first pictures I'll show you were from Jaime's boatyard, but he only works on clients' motors, okay? He, he doesn't have much to sell. You know, he might here and there, but uh, he said nothing for sale, no. So, but he showed, he said, okay, where, uh, where is um, uh, Marco, the, the one that uh, Pancho's Boatyard referred me to? Marcos, okay. Ah, oh, it turns out it's only like three, three blocks away from Jaime's. So you'll see the big motors that I got uh, to check out from Marco, all right? And uh, now he, he's on the ball. He's got... Uh, Real professional, he guarantees his rebuild motors, but they are expensive, folks, okay? He had the big 225 horsepower Honda, <laughs> $8,500, wow. But he guarantees it, okay? He said, in the States, that'll cost you ten, eleven, twelve thousand dollars $12,000, same thing, so... And he's not dickering for nothing. He's not coming down at all. That's his price. Then he showed me a 220 horsepower Yamaha, which uh, I kind of like the Yamaha's better. But he said uh, he really hadn't checked that motor out so well, and he couldn't offer a guarantee. So I messaged the Ponchos back in San Quentin. They, you know, they're going to be working their best deal with Pancho to, uh, with Marco also because they know him. So uh, we'll let them kind of work it out because there's all kinds of controls and stuff. It's not just the motor. You want the controls. You want everything, okay? You, you, you know, you're talking like $20,000 on a new rig for all that stuff. And here you, you can get it for half price in Mexico. So you won't be paying any import fees and you won't be dealing with people far away. If there's a problem, uh, they can go right down to Ensenada and talk to Marcos themselves. Okay. So that's how it ended folks. Uh, great day, great contacts. <laughs> It's looking good, a future in uh, the fishing boat industry, all right? And, uh, of course, the little woman, uh, I was glad to see her, but she wasn't glad to see me. It's take a couple hours to make up, to uh, make up and, you know, and uh, start all over again, folks. But that's that's what God wants for us to do our best every day, no matter what. And if you haven't done anything wrong, you have nothing to hide, nothing to be ashamed of, all right? It is such a fantastic day. I had to share this last uh, part of how it ended. All right, folks. Take care. God bless. Will Diego over and out for now.